Oh my goodness. You guys should be fined and imprisoned. You're infecting the entire island. Go home. Nobody wants you here. Everybody hates you. You're being watched, so you better watch your backs. If you make folks angry enough, there will be vigilante justice. Oh my goodness. So why did we leave Seattle? And what on earth has happened since we left? Oh my God. been on the water now for nearly a month to social distance as the world fights the war on coronavirus. Living on a boat while still being allowed to cruise in open Washington waters has put us in a unique situation during this incredibly harsh period in all of our lives. Not only have we had to consider our own safety as well as the safety of others from a virus, but we've recently had to confront a more serious epidemic, one of fear, anger, and hate. Much more on that later, but since life has to go on, you guessed it, that means more boat work. Today we're at anchor and the project on deck for the day is to put a new membrane in our water maker. I don't believe the previous owner pickled it at the end of season or flushed it religiously. So I believe the, the membrane is compromised and limiting the production and output of fresh water coming out of the water maker. We have a low capacity 12 volt water maker our water maker is supposed to put out about six gallons per hour of fresh water, or uh, it's rated by gallons per day, which is 150 gallons per day. We currently are getting about half of that production out of the water maker. We average about three gallons per hour. So we're hoping by replacing this membrane that we get closer to that five or six gallon per hour rate. We have 300 gallons of holding capacity on Freedom. 300 gallons typically last us about one week. So our usage is about 40 gallons per day. So if we can get up to that five or six gallons per hour, hopefully we can make all of our water needs in eight hours per day or so of running the water maker. So where the water maker membrane is, I can't actually slide the membrane out of the housing. There's not enough room, so I actually need to take the entire water maker assembly out of the lazarette and then bring it up into an open area where I can work on it. So I'm going to head down into the engine room, grab some tools, and get started. maker that, uh, that I'm going to be taking out is the Clark pump in the membrane which is in the back port corner the aft port corner of the lazarette so the item that I have my flashlight on that whole assembly I'm going to take out and we'll bring it up outside of the lazarette so we can work on it more easily taking the whole assembly out, I was able to just take the water maker uh, membrane housing out. So I took off the production line and then there's two high pressure lines and then there's just two, two clamps securing it. So this is the housing that the new membrane or filter, if you would, slides into. And 
this is the this is the membrane that's going to get replaced. One side has a seal on it, the other side does not. We'll pay attention how it comes out of the housing. This side I'm obviously seeing a seal on. And this side I'm not. So, we go in the same way. Ready to go back in. Alright, the new membrane is in place. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the water maker. They tell you with a new membrane that you shouldn't put any of the product into your tank uh, for about two hours. I think there's a, a solution or chemical in the membrane that they want you to thoroughly flush out. So we're going to turn it on and we'll let it just drain into our sink and we'll run it for a couple hours and then we'll check what our output is. So that's the discharge, the brine water coming out. I don't know that it made much improvement. So the only thing left is rebuilding our Clark pump, which might be the problem. Even at three gallons an hour, we'll be able to make more than enough water to keep up with our usage, only running our generator about five or six hours every day. And now that that's complete, we're ready to head south for Easter dinner. Ready for dinner? 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 Ooh, Easter dinner. Yeah, I gotta get working on my pumpkin puree. What's for dinner? Scallops and pumpkin. Scallops on pumpkin puree and a Caesar salad. And that might be an odd combo, but it's because we have lots of stuff on board to make a Caesar salad, so we're gonna make a Caesar salad. And that's it. Oh, and carrot cake. Sounds like a plan. Because last provisioning trip, we find, we we made some good decisions and we bought some carrot cake. Should we start making dinner? Yeah, it's probably dinner time. Okay, let's okay. make dinner. So for anybody who doesn't know or is new to our channel, as of March 1st, 2020, Sean and I moved aboard our boat full time. So we live on a 43 foot Nordhaven trawler in the Pacific Northwest out of Seattle. And our boat is our home now. And our boat's home is Shoal Shoal Bay Marina in Seattle. And Shoal Shoal Bay Marina is the second largest marina in the Puget Sound region and it's got the largest live aboard community on the entire west coast of the United States. Needless to say, it's it's a busy place. There's a, a lot of people there and a lot of people there now who are sheltering in place on their boat.
So unlike California, Washington state has allowed boats to move around. So for us, when all of the stay at home orders came down in mid-March, Sean and I looked at each other and we looked at our situation and we looked at where we were and thought the best place clearly for us right now is to leave the marina and go find anchorages where we can just be in place with hardly any connection or any interaction to other human beings. So that's what we did. We left our marina and we headed north to the San Juan Islands to find various anchorages where we could be remote for as long as we needed to be. Speaking of Sean, if you're wondering where the heck he is, he's actually on a Skype call because that's what he's been doing about 10 to 12 hours every day. He works for a manufacturing company and his team is working on some pretty incredible stuff right now for coronavirus testing. So he's been super busy and in need of connectivity. So hence one of the reasons why the San Juan Islands felt like um, a pretty good option. We can be as far away as possible, but still have life go on and do the work that we need to do. And that decision has sparked a response from some groups that has been really concerning and has gotten to a point where we feel like we probably need to address it in real time. So when we arrived up in the San Juan Islands, we were close to Roche Harbor and it was about six days before Washington closed all of our state parks. So even before that park closure, some folks that follow us on YouTube and social media created a little bit of a firestorm. Some people were very freaked out that we were up there and felt like we were endangering their safety. We got messages like I would never have expected. People within a few days of being there were saying, we don't want you here, go home, you're infecting the entire island with coronavirus. Um, the entire island hates you, you're evil like stuff that blew our mind because our decision to go there and be by ourselves was one to keep people safe. So after eight days of being up there and every other day we had gone to shore. So we would find um, an open road to walk ourselves and to walk our dog, Sully. We did go to one of the historic parks up there before they had shut down. And all of this, we hadn't come into contact with any other human beings. We left the San Juan Islands and we came back south. And even after we left, the worst had yet to come people started sending us even more threatening emails. And that's when some of those emails and messages came about. If you step one foot off your boat, you better watch your back. And if you make people angry enough, there will be vigilante justice and you're being watched. We hate you. This barrage of, of hate mail was, was pretty concerning and kind of all came at once. And I think um, there's a, a, a group that is definitely, you know, not happy with our decisions right now. And we can understand it to a degree, but when it becomes threatening in a way that's beyond just a disagreement with our decision, it, it's you know why we wanted to address it. If you are a voter who is in the region right now or thinking of going up there, know that our sharing of our experience and our sharing of our time there was by no means um, a big public advertisement to have everybody go up there. It was basically sharing our decision to do so. Know that the islands have since, as of mid-April and even I think even a little bit before in early April, have put out some very clear guidelines that they don't want anybody there. They don't want you anchored there. And they don't even want people to go to the islands who have a second home there. They're asking everybody to quarantine themselves for 14 days if you step foot on the islands. So just know that and respect their wishes as they're an island who's fearful right now that anything that happens could potentially you know, destroy their medical system. By us sharing things that we do, we want that to be a positive thing and not an uncivil, threatening, or harming thing in any way. So I hope you all understand a little more about why we made the decision we did to leave and what our intentions were and that it came from a place of concern and nothing else. We hope you guys are all staying healthy and doing your best to make the decisions you need to make to keep you and your families safe from 
all the craziness that's happening around us. We will see you guys later and wish you all the best.